How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Blue Shifting in another Ace Academy. And today is gonna be a good one. I think this will be the prelude, the beginning, probably first half of the Hot Springs, which will I'm sure be full of fun and cuteness and adorableness and all around. <laughs> um, so anyway, when we last left off, uh, we so we did some time with Yuna at the tennis courts. Uh, she's just went to do a little mini tournament thing, did really well, as we expected. Uh, but then Sho called us, and apparently he's wanting to make some more official moves with Mayu, and he's freaking out because he doesn't know what to get her. So we're going to be here to help him out. Uh, <laughs> it should be funny. And let's see, the other thing about it, so yeah, but like they seem to progress, because the last time we saw them together, they left hand in hand, which I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, so, let's see what happens. <laughs> After I park, I see Sho waiting for me at the main entrance. He greets me with his usual goofy grin, but his hair is disheveled and there's worry in his eyes. Oh dear. Thanks for meeting me. I don't even know where to start. Oh, come on, man. It's not that hard. Um, honestly, I know. <laughs> because I've spent time with her. But she loves manga and comic books and books and reading. Maybe loves reading, right? Yeah. How did you know? Dude, I like talk to her. <laughs> We've talked books in the past. She likes to tell me about what she's currently reading. It's so cute to see how excited she gets over them. I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> I have to say, like, out of the out of all the options, I still think Yuna is my favorite. May use the second favorite though. And she definitely deserves better than a show. No offense, show, but He's clueless, and she wants. She needs someone geeky, but whatever. Let them do their thing. If they're in love, they're in love. You can't force that. Much as I wish I could. Um, so she's reading. Keep going. Man. You should get her a new book. Maybe something that's just come out. That way, you know she hasn't read it yet. I think she'd like that. Excellent. Show nods. Good thinking, Broseph. Let's go. Oh look, see, we already solved the problem. He leads the way to the store. What's this gift for, anyway? It's our one month anniversary. So they are official. Wow, time sure flies fast. Has it been a month already? I feel like it was just yesterday that we fought on fought May's team. I know, me too. Time seems to pass in a click, doesn't it? Oh, so that was like the official date? Interesting. I never heard that saying before. Anyway, congrats on congrats on your one month. Thanks. I'm actually kind of surprised by how it happened. How did it happen? It came out of the blue. Mayu and I were hanging out as usual the Monday after our match with Onabugeisha, and I could tell something was on her mind. When I asked her what was wrong, she blurted out a question about feelings. It was so unlike her that I was too shocked to speak. That sounds like Mayu. <laughs> Mayu didn't even hesitate, and she started talking about how she's liked me since we were kids, and she wanted to know if I felt the same way or if I was into someone else. Applause, Mayu. Good job. Man, that's really big of her. That's impressive. Shao laughs. I guess she saw me walking home with Hitomi and thought we were dating. Silly, right? No, uh, makes sense, honestly. Yeah. She looks sheepish. Sheepish. I started laughing as soon as she said that, and I know I embarrassed her, but I couldn't help it. I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. As if I could ever like anyone else. Well, you gotta let her know that, at, you know, sometime. Jeez, I blink. Really? Well, yeah. Why do you sound so surprised? It was obvious how Mayu felt about you, but you never seemed to notice. Joe's cheeks flush. I noticed. Of course I noticed. So you're just a dumb fool? Then why? She's so smart and pretty and awesome. She's way out of my league. At least we can agree on that. She is head over heels for you. It's still hard for me to believe that. That's why this gift is so important. Oh man, relax. You got her. You don't need to pretend like or do any action. Like she already told you she likes you. You get her a gift because you want to get her something nice. You don't buy love. That's just that's stupid. And if you can buy the love, then it's not real. <laughs> no wonder he seems so agitated. May you will love whatever you get her. The fact that you're buying her a present at all will make her happy. Show smiles worriedly. You think? Oh. It's funny, I'm sure that people have to be told this all the time. I'm sure I probably have to be told this at one point, but man, if he's, it seems so simple. It's just like, I mean, love's funny because like it can be complicated, but ultimately it's straightforward. And that your feelings for people rarely are gonna hinge off of one mistake or, or one action or one present. It's mostly gonna be about, you know, like honesty, trust, you know, enjoyment to be each other's company. 
and ultimately just attraction. You know, like you can't force those things, they just happen. Of course. Still, it has to be perfect. I nod. On that note, we better get back to searching. Right. Alright, let's do this. I helped Show pick out the perfect gift for his lady friend. He ended up going with my advice and buying me the newest fantasy bestseller. That's a good good safe bet. Good safe bet. Oh man. At least you remind me reminds me of high school. I had a lot of fun with dating. I didn't date a whole lot of people seriously because I kind of I kinda of had it in my mind I would only seriously date somebody who I actually thought I could go like like the distance with, I guess you could say, like someone I would, could potentially see myself marrying. So I didn't date a whole lot. But it was nice being able to have that clarity and that understanding of like what dating was for, that it's about building a relationship and seeing how far it can go, rather than just having someone you could snog with, you know. As we exit the store, Show has a spring in his step, but he seems both nervous and hopeful. I hope she ends up liking her present. I'm sure she will. And we say our goodbye in the parking lot. Oh well. God, we helped. Since I don't have any class today, I've got even more free time than usual. What do I feel like doing? Uh, <laughs> it did say, what do, I, what do I feel like doing? And it's picking between people. Because then it feels, feels like, who do I feel like doing? And that's also awkward. <laughs> Carrie or Valerie? Carrie. Definitely Carrie. I wonder what Carrie's up to. I pull out my phone and give her a call. Hello. Hey, Carrie. Hi. Are you busy? I'm just about to head to the daycare. It's going to be an extra busy day. Yeah, okay, I don't... Did we know that she's in the daycare? Show and I caught... Okay, there's my Show and I caught Carrie's uncle in the campus parking lot one day right before we were going into town. He freely shared that Carrie volunteers at his daycare. He invited us to stop by, but Carrie's desical air was enough to deter us. <laughs> she may not act like it, but she's still a little relieved that she doesn't have to hide that from us anymore. Our uncle says Carrie's a big softie and a, fa and a favorite instructor amongst the kids. I believe it when I see it. Extra busy. Yeah. We're understaffed since one person is on vacation and another person called in sick. Oh, Maybe I could help. She's like, I don't want it, but maybe... Hello? If that's what you want, then I guess you can help. Wow. Sound a little less enthusiastic there. Jeez. But don't forget it still work. Yes, ma'am. Don't call me ma'am. <laughs> now hurry up and get here. <laughs> Before I have a chance to say any of my sick, uh, sick rebuttals, she hangs up on the phone. Dang it. Oh well, better not be later, Cowery will be angry. So, effectively, it's Tuesday, right? You know, every Tuesday. I find my bike and drive to the daycare. I guess it's probably Friday, actually. When I arrive, Cowery's nowhere to be found. I follow the group of adults into the building. They're either parents or staff, but either way, they'll get they'll get me where I need to be. Apparently, the library. <laughs> Considering there are no kids tagging along, I think it's safe to say they're, so they're staff. We pass through one of the children's playrooms and continue into an office in the back. Carrie's there with another guy discussing something I can't hear. She nods in greeting when I enter. Once everyone gets situated, the guy clears his throat. Hello, everyone. Whoa, who are I you? know we haven't had one of these staff meetings in a while. But it's going to be a bit busy today since Daichi is on vacation and Hibiki called in sick. Hibiki, that's a funny name. Luckily, Kaori's friend has offered to help out, so we'll only be short one man instead of two. Yay! Everyone stares at me as it smiles in my direction. Uh, hi, uh, I'm, I'm protagonist. Uh, happy to help. Glad to meet you. I'm Eito Iwasa. Cool. Since we'll have to do a little shuffling with coverage, here are everyone's roles for today. Ito checks the clipboard and goes down the list of names. Kari watches silently as Ito takes charge. Once he's finished, he looks at me. Since you're from Ace, we'll have you tutoring the older kids. Oh, okay. That'd be nice. Why not? Kaori and I will attend to the toddlers and younger kids. Aww. I'm surprisingly pumped for this assignment. Tutoring kids should be a piece of cake considering how much I've helped Nikki in the past. I'm such a good Oni-chan. <sighs> Don't, come on, man. You, you can't be a weeb. Don't, don't, don't make it seem like you are. I guess he has a right to say that. Ah, see, it's people like me go around saying that. It's like, mm, no. <laughs> With everyone's roles aside, the group slowly disperses. One of the staff members offers to take me to the tutoring room. I thank them and follow her into the room filled with children between fourth and sixth grade. Not bad. Seeing a new face, the kids kept interrupting me to ask questions about myself. They were especially curious because I didn't look very Japanese. They asked about where I was from and what it was like back home and what it was like to be a pilot. I tried hard to keep the focus on their homework, but it was a lot tougher than I expected. Finally, I gave up and answered their questions. It's like, whatever, kids. 
Once their questions were out of the way, they were able to focus on their homework. Although they tried hard, most of the children had difficulty grasping the material. I could tell that they were frustrated, so I tried to think of different ways of explaining the same things, which helped immensely. It's true. If you're ever working with someone who's struggling to learn, oftentimes it's because the way they learn is different. You know, sometimes reading something over and over again can help them learn. Maybe flashcards, sometimes acting things out. You know, you've got to make sure you think about that. And if you're struggling in studies, like, you've got to think of that too. You probably are trying to learn in the wrong ways. Because just because it works for some people doesn't mean it'll work for you. Well, I'm just blah blah blah, I'm just talking to you guys a lot today. Which is fine. <laughs> After a while, it looks like everyone's on track. And I, I, I'll go see how Carrie's doing. It doesn't take me long to find the younger kids. All I have to do is follow the sounds of shrieks and laughter. And no crying, that's good. Oh my gosh, that's adorable! Oh, that's so cute! Jeez. <laughs> oh my gosh. She looked right at home there. I gently push open the door and see Carrie surrounded by children. Both her arms are full of kids, and even one hangs off her back. The rest of her, the rest hug her legs. Although Carrie's weekly weak protests, weakly protests, the huge smile on her face gives away her true feelings. Oh my gosh, I've never seen her this happy before. A chorus of Miss Carrie circles around as the children complete, compete for her attention. Suddenly, the child on Carrie's back slips. With a sharp yelp, she grabs a strap on Carrie's clothing. Oh, fetch. No. No. Careful. Uh. The strap falls off her shoulder and she bends down so the child can land softly on the table. Good job. I got it. It's pretty much a balancing acrobatic act watching kids, trust me. Ieto, gra uh, Ieto gra graciously <laughs> places the strap back on Kari's shoulder. I wait in secret glee for the impending doom Ieto has inflicted upon himself by touching her, but to my surprise, Kari doesn't react. As Yeto tries to take one of the kids out of Kari's hands, the child looks at Yeto for a second, then burrows his face into Kari's shoulder. Kari laughs. I don't think she wants to leave anytime soon. Yeto laughs too. I can't really blame her. Oh la la, do I such young love in the air? I can't help but grin. Oh, nice. I wonder if everybody has like somebody they kind of fall for if it's not you. <laughs> Interesting. Since you've got your hands full, why don't I take care of their snacks and set up for the next activity? So. That'd be great. Thanks. Interesting. No problem. I wonder what happens if you're like dating her. They smile at each other. Wow, a smile from Carrie. Must be serious. <laughs> I tiptoe back to our room and return to all the kids. It looks like Carrie's doing more than okay. Another hour passes by in a blur, and before long, the parents trickle in to collect their children. The kids whine that they want to stay longer with Miss Carrie, but the parents urge them to go home. After all the kids have gone, the staff waves goodbye to each other and packs up to go home too. But before I go, I want to catch up with Carrie. Man, I imagine this the conversation is very different <laughs> if you're dating her. I found her with Ieto cleaning up the toddler's room. Ieto makes a comment which, Kawi, which has Kauri laughing. Kauri's laughing at somebody else's joke? Never thought I'd see the day. I chuckle to myself. Better not ruin their moment. I, I'll catch up with Kauri tomorrow. Before I can sl slip away again, Kauri notices me and heads over. Hey. I stop my giggle. <laughs> I stop my giggling and clear my throat. <clears> throat. She raises an eyebrow. Uh... What's up with you? I can't believe she doesn't know. Wait, what? Oh, <laughs> I spin around the spot, and Uncle Miguel chuckling behind me. I know, right? It's cute how oblivious she is. Michael Miguel nods, but Carrie huffs. What is wrong with you two? Yeah, <laughs> there's the old Carrie. Hey, Carrie, I'm heading off. I'll see you later. Carrie's demeanor softens when she waves at Ieta. Oh, yeah, sure. Good work today. You too. He sounds really nice, honestly. <laughs> Miguel chuckles again and pitches his voice high. Good work today! <laughs> you too! Carrie freezes as her face turns a beet red. It, it's nothing like that! Sure! Right. We believe you. Mm -hmm. Stop! <laughs> she scowls at us and then stomps back into the toddler room and throws toys in their bins. Young love. So precious. Miguel grins. Aw, it's so cute! I'm glad I came out today. I got to see another side of Carrie. One that wasn't I won't soon forget. As I gather my things, I drive home. After I grab my I gather my things. Not like I'm not picking up toys on my way while I'm riding my bike. That'd be exciting. My stomach growls loudly as I park my bike in the garage. Nikki, please be home for once. Wonder what we're going to have for dinner. 
As I enter the kitchen, I see a dainty strawberry cake sitting on the kitchen table. Why am I suspicious? Cake for dinner? I peer closely at the layered cake and use my finger to taste the whipped cream and melt on my tongue in a cloud of sweetness. Fresh whipped cream? That's the only kind of whipped cream I'll eat. Mom spoiled us. She never brought whipped, bought whipped cream because she always made it herself. Wait a minute. Mom's birthday? Oh. Nikki? Did Nikki bake a cake for Mom's birthday? I search the house but see no sign of her. There's no text from her on my phone either. Clearly she came home after school, which means there's only one place she can be. I grab my keys and hop my bike to go find Nikki. We lived next to a park back home, and Nikki would often escape there when she was upset. Just as I expected, I find Nikki swinging forlornly in the park. Oh no. Oh no! Oh gosh! Her head is bent and she gazes down at something in her hands. No! This is not good! I take a seat beside her. She glances at me but doesn't speak. Instead, she cups open the, the open locket in her hands, the one that usually hangs around her neck. Inside is a picture of mom and dad. You okay? I don't know. Mom would have loved that cake you made her. Nikki snaps the locket shut and holds it at her chest. I had to do something, you know? Today is mom's birthday and I couldn't not celebrate it. Oh, it's only been one year. That'd be horrible. I know. So I thought I'd make her a cake, like we used to, but then... Her voice trembles, and she takes a minute to compose herself. Then that cake, it was, it was like it was taunting me. A reminder that Mom will never get a chance to eat it. Oh, it's not fair! That was not. Nikki's knuckles turn white, she clutches the locket. Her hands begin to shake. I barely got any time with her before she was taken away, and I just want her back. Nikki. I know I'm being crazy, but I just keep thinking it's my fault. Oh, that is definitely not true. Tears trickle down her cheeks and leave wet stains on her shirt. Instinctively, I pull her in for a hug, and she leans against me. It wasn't your fault, Nikki. It is! You had no control over this. She pulls away and falls silent. When she finally speaks, her voice is thick. I missed the bus that day. What? The reason they left the cafe is because I missed the bus and needed a ride home. Dang it. It's not her fault, but she- Ah! I keep thinking. What if I had just gotten on that bus as soon as class ended? I wasn't even doing anything important. I was just hanging out and lost track of time. You can't be that nitpicky about that, though. I, you, I, it's like being mad because the moon rose, or because gravity holds you on the ground. Like, things happen, and I, there's really no way you can deal with fate. There's no way that things... I don't know. And heck, we, we might even, they might not have been like an accidental thing. Like maybe there was something really serious going on. But I remember being <sighs> so annoyed when they didn't show up. Oh gosh. I was so angry. I had to walk home and all I could think about was how much. Oh gosh. Her voice falters. How much I hated them. God, no. You didn't mean that. You were angry. What kind of daughter thinks like that? When I remember, I just feel so disgusted with myself. You were a kid. What kids just do. Be that as it may, what happened wasn't your fault, Nikki. You didn't tell the driver to hit them. You can't keep blaming yourself. Then why do I feel like I'm being punished? Because this sucks. Because it's so easy to think about all the years that have been stolen from you and to lament that loss. But you can't keep thinking like that. Be happy for the time you did spend together. Focus on all the good times you had with them. The last thing mom and dad would want is for you to be sad because of them. They want you to be happy. I know. I just miss them so much. I know. I miss them too. But on the bright side, at least you still got me. Nikki sighs. I thought you were trying to make me feel better, not worse. Ah, there she is. Hey. 
Celis had a weak laugh. Her tears have stopped and some color is returning to her face. Remember Mom's cake from last year? It was completely inedible. You mean the second cake? The one you baked for Mom because you forgot her birthday? Oh yeah, let's bring up that. <laughs> oh yeah, whoops. Nikki laughs. Mom tried so hard to eat it, but eventually she just gave up. Not my finest moment, but at least it wasn't as bad as the one Dad baked for her a year before. You mean when he almost burned our entire house down? Nikki laughs so hard she snorts, which makes her only laugh harder. Her laughter is infectious and I can't help but join in. <laughs> I think I've got a lot more Dad at me than you do. Yeah, but it's not all bad. You've got a lot of his good qualities, too. Like how you're always there for me when I need you. It's a hard job, but somebody has to do it. Nikki bumps me playfully with her swing. Rude! <laughs> no, you know what's rude? Leaving a perfectly delicious cake untouched in the kitchen. That's true. It was made for eating. So let's go eat it. Grinning from ear to ear, Nikki nods and stands up. Together we head to my bike and I drive us back home. I did not need an emotional ringing of my heart today. As soon as I park, the two of us hop off my bike and eagerly rush into the kitchen, then freeze. There's only a third of the cake remaining, and a trail of crumbs starts from the kitchen table and ends at Uncle Kato's face. I only stare in stunned silence at the scene. Uncle Kaito? He pauses, for to his, a fork full of moist yellow cake halfway to his mouth. Did you eat all of the cake? Uncle Kaito looks like her fork to Nikki, then back at the fork. I want my lawyer. Oh no! Nikki and I burst out laughing as Uncle Kaido shoves the fork to his mouth. Nikki and I split the rest of the cake while Kaido looks on longingly. Holy crap! That's a whole flippin' cake! I'd be throwing up at that point! Jeez! Nikki is all smiles for the rest of the night, and Uncle Kaido asks us about our day. I tuck into bed early and know I have a busy day of frolicking at the hot springs tomorrow. Oh, you hill boy, you do. Soon I'm dreaming about Yuna steaming up in the hot water. Oh, jeez! <laughs> Those are some pleasant dreams. Okay, let's see. Yeah, we can start this. We're gonna start it. We're not too far into this yet. I wake up at the first sound of my alarm and jump out of bed. I need to meet my friends at the train station so we can all head over to the hot springs together. I'd rather not be the last one there. They might leave without me. <laughs> no one care they would. <laughs> Just kidding. No, they wouldn't. Would they? <laughs> Either way, I'll throw on some clothes and race to, the pa race to pack what I up what I need. Make sure you're wearing your swimming trunks. Well, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Depends on how authentic you're going to go. After grabbing a quick breakfast, I hop on my bike and drive to the train station. I haven't been back here since my arrival in Aizokaze. It's exactly the same as I remember it. People bustling back and forth, and the whole station is blanketed with the buzz of conversations. For some reason, the familiarity is comforting. I purchase my ticket and find Kaori, Mayu, Valerie, and Yuna already waiting on the platform. Just missing show. Oh, that's cool. Interesting. They're very brightly colored. Hey! Yuna and Valerie wave as I approach while Mayu smiles and Kari nods in greeting. You made it! So did you! <laughs> I glance around us. Where's Sho? Running late. Like usual. He'll be here. I'm sure- oh, you can't, yeah, he's not gonna miss this. <laughs> I hope so. He has all our tickets. Kari gives me a look. I mean, of course he'll be here. She crosses her arms, but otherwise falls silent. Even Yuna looks worried. She checks the time. We've still got a few minutes before the train comes. As the seconds tick by, even I'm beginning to lose hope. Thankfully, show soon appears. Hey guys, ready to get our heat on? Oh, thank goodness. We stare at Shell. Uh, that came out wrong. <laughs> yeah. He looks around with a wide grin on his face. Awesome. The gang's all here. The, labor, the laborious roar of engines is heard before the train is sighted. Show points to the approaching train. Just in time, too, because here's the train. You are cutting it really close, Show. That's true. I'm right on time. That would drive me nuts. <laughs> I hate it when I, especially for something like a train, where like, oh, like if you're driving, you'd be like, oh, we could just be a little late. But no, a train's like, we cannot miss this, or we're going to be really late. Oh, I'm always up early. Everyone quiets down as we get ready to board. We settle into our seats and enjoy the ride. Ah, trains. Trains are actually pretty fun. Ooh, very pretty. When we arrive, we step off the train and stretch our legs. There's a beautiful hotel in the distance, and the hot springs are tucked into the mountains behind it. All right, here we are safe and sound. Let's go check in first. All right. Joe leads the way into the hotel we trail behind, enjoying the scenery. I breathe in deeply. <sighs> Letting the crisp mountain air fill my lungs. Just being here already helped me feel rejuvenated. 
We enter the hotel and the front desk agent gives us the key to our, keys to our rooms. Valerie and Yuna are bunking together while Carrie and Mayu share a room. Obviously, they leave Sho and I to share the last room. Well, obviously. <laughs> We're not going to be doing any shakeups there. And it's very wise of them to put Yuna and Valerie together and Carrie and Mayu together. Because if they put Yuna and Mayu together, it'd be too easy to have to swap. And, uh, you know, shenanigans. The girls disappear into their room, so not before agreeing to meet right outside the hotel in ten minutes. Sho and I enter our room. He immediately flops on the bed closest to the window. I'll ah, this that's bed. nice. Now I'll take the other one. Alright, I'm fine with this one. I throw my bag into the bed closest to the wall in the doorway. I don't like being next to the window anyway. Even with the curtains closed, I still feel too exposed. I would say it's like too bright sometimes, so the view probably is really awesome. Exposed? Like if I were to open curtains, face would, uh, like, like if I op were to open the curtains, a face would be staring in. Sho looks warily at the window. Don't say things like that! Do you want me to have nightmares? <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> Once we've had a chance to rest, put down our things, we head down to the lobby and wait outside. The girls trickle in a few minutes later. Look exactly the same. Should we go for a soak now? We want to save that for tonight. Trust me, it's way more relaxing at the end of the day. Oh, sure. Well, what should we do instead? Hmm. Joe puts out tickets and studies the text on there. Um, what about... Baby's voice trails off. What about what? What if we toured the gardens? She points to the side clearing of blossoms and trees. They look really pretty. Yeah, sounds good. We get a discounted price for the tours too, since we already have tickets to the hot springs. Valerie jumps excitedly. Let's do it then. She races toward the gardens. Wait! Don't just run off like that! <laughs> bye bye. Carrie takes off after her, the rest of us scramble to catch up. Luckily, we arrive right before the next scheduled tour. We're all able to secure a spot with the group. The tour guide leads us on a gravel path and speaks nonstop about the history of the garden and each plant we see. I, I listen initially as he talks about the original lord who commissioned the garden as a way to show off his st status and wealth. I remember learning about the same guy in our foreign international br bridging class, so it's extra cool to be standing in his garden. The guide lectures on e each plant we pass as long is far less uh, engaging though as my uh, though as my attention wanes. Wow, I just my my uh, my ability to comprehend the sentence was less engaging as well. Jeez, let's wake up, brain. I survey the flowers and trees around me. Bright petals of color sway gently in the breeze. A few of them float towards our feet. Wonder how they kept this place so green at this time of year. At a glance around the group, everyone seems to be focused on the greenery around us. I look out past the field of flowers and admire how far and wide the garden is. It is pretty impressive. It sounds so nice. <laughs> I'm kind of a sucker for a well taken care of garden, though I'm honestly not the best gardener. Like, I'm not a huge fan of pulling weeds, but I, I love it when people like take their time and really cultivate a really just gorgeous landscape. A flash of striped fur peeks out amid the colorful petals. What was that? A few paces later, I catch another glimpse of the gray striped tail before it disappears back amongst the flowers. Maybe a fox? Is, is, is that a lemur? <laughs> uh, no lemurs in Japan, stupid, or go investigate. Oh, God. Fortune favors the bold! <laughs> oh, wait. 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 Could it be a skunk, though? That could be bad. Uh, but there's no lemurs in Japan. Doubtful. I'm sure there are other animals with black and white striped tails. I should stick with the group and not wander off on my own. I think I might have avoided a skunk. The tour was very beautiful and I enjoyed the leisurely pace we took around the gardens. Although I did learn a lot about the plants than I ever wanted to know. Once the tour was over, we regrouped back, we regrouped back outside the hotel. Oh, nice. It was pleasant. How'd everyone enjoy the tour? May you sighs dreamily. The flowers were so beautiful. I felt like I was walking through a fairy tale. I'm glad you had fun, Mayu. I thought it was really pretty too, but I found the history of the place to be the most interesting part. So far I would agree with you now. The, the, the views would be great, but the history would be more fun. Carrie shrugs. Yeah, it was alright. <laughs> Not your cup of tea. It reminded me a little bit of home. On the outskirts of town there was a cute little museum which also included a garden walk. That sounds really nice. It was. I thought it was good, but I could have used less of all that flower talk. You aren't the only one. I thought it was informative. But enough of that. It's now time for the main event! The hot springs. <laughs> Yay! 
I cannot wait to soak in that glorious water. Same here. Mayu grins and even Kyrie cracks a smile. Oh boy, oh boy. We eagerly follow Sho to the hotel where he presents our tickets. We had to wait for what felt like a couple hours at least while they prepared the place. And that's where we're going to have to end for today. <laughs> so tomorrow is going to be, well, next tomorrow, next week. Next week's going to be the good one. This is going to be an exciting episode, and I'm sure it'll be full of lots of hijinks and happiness. So make sure you're there for that one, too. Thank you so much for joining me for this part of the episode once again. Thank you for being a part of this series. It's wonderful to have you with me. I love it. I'm really sad because I feel like we're, we're going to have to end it at some point. <laughs> I don't want it to end oh, but it's wonderful anyway this one was a very emotional one too like oh my gosh Nikki she pulled the heartstrings really hard today <sighs> oh man but thank you again it's been a pleasure and until the next video you watch with me or whatever you happen to see me in next I'll see you there